What do you do after you've broken the land speed record and been the first man to go supersonic on the ground? Well, if you're Andy Green, you try and top that by going a thousand miles an hour in a rocket powered car. But that's going to take training. Luckily, Andy is a former fast jet pilot, so he's got the experience. He also has a secret weapon, an extra 300 that he uses for training. He's kindly offered to take me up and show me some maneuvers from an average training sortie. Let's hope I've got the stomach for it. Since 1994, Wing Commander Andy Green has been part of a British land speed record team. Along with Project Director Richard Noble, they broke the land speed record in 1997 by going supersonic in Thrust SSC. Yeah, well, good morning, Golf Sierra, India, 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 taxi. So with my flight suit on, straps tightened and ready to roll, I took the opportunity to find out more about the world's fastest man. OK, off we go. So Andy, how did you first get into aviation? I was very lucky. I pretty much had my dream introduction to aviation. Applied to the Royal Air Force uh, straight from school and was sponsored through university for a, uh, a cadetship, straight through flying training and finished up on fast jets. Just couldn't have been better. How did you get involved with the land speed record? Literally saw a piece in the Sunday Times saying that Richard Noble was building a land speed record car and he was looking for a driver. So in 1997, we went on to set the world's first and still only supersonic world land speed record. And now you're planning to go on to break the 1,000 mile an hour barrier. What stage is that at at the moment? Bloodhound uh, supersonic car now, we're about two years off running at high speed. This year we're finishing detailed design. Next year, 2011, we'll actually be putting the car together. And by the back end of next year, we should actually be ready to start testing the car in the UK. And then 2012, off to South Africa to start running it. The vehicle itself, unlike just going supersonic, which Thrust SSC was uh, designed to do, now needs to optimise the performance to get all the way to 1,000 miles an hour. The wheels will have to take 50,000 G at the wheel rim. The uh, car structure will have to take 12 tonnes of aerodynamic load make sure it doesn't generate any lift or any download while we're actually accelerating all the way up to Mach 1.4, 1,000 miles an hour on the ground. So the way to practice the G and then the deceleration is to use this aeroplane like a centrifuge to actually simulate the G. Minus 2.5 G on the acceleration plus 3.3 G on the deceleration. So for instance, putting the reheat in is the same as turning the aeroplane over like this and hanging in the straps. That's minus 1 G. In a car, accelerating feet first, that's the same as accelerating at 20 miles an hour per second, which is what the car will do before I kick the rocket in. Do you liken the cockpit of the car to a fast jet, or is it completely different? In a lot of ways, it's very similar, Bloodhound, to a, uh, a fast jet, because I'm using my fast jet skills, and I'm monitoring the same sort of information about speed and power and loadings that I would actually use in a fast jet. It's going to be a very, very busy 100 seconds to cover 10 miles. That's the equivalent of starting outside Terminal 5 at Heathrow and stopping outside the Houses of Parliament in a minute and a half. OK, Dave, what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you what it feels like to actually do the whole Bloodhound profile. But Bloodhound's at the end of the track, but its engine's running. I've let the brakes off and we're winding the engines up gradually. Over about 10 seconds, the maximum dry power uh, on the EJ200. And then as I put in reheat, over about one second, reheat will bite and then we'll get close to 1G acceleration. So upside down simulating that, now accelerating at 20 miles an hour per second. So through 150, 180, 200 miles an hour, approaching 230, starting to feed the rocket in. The stage 1 rocket give us about minus 1.3G, looking for stage 2 rocket, going to minus 2.3G. Now we're accelerating at 50 miles an hour per second. So up through 450, 500, 550, 600 miles an hour, get shockwaves over the canopy. We're now going supersonic, 750. G starts to back off, still doing 30 miles an hour per second. Up through 850, 880, 910, 940. Approaching the measured mile now, approaching 1,000 miles an hour. As you get to the measured mile, three and a half seconds. Pence your legs in your stomach, you're about to close the throttle, and you get 3.3 G coming in now as we start to decelerate. Checking the oil pressure, it's good. Decelerating at 60 miles an hour per second as we come back off the G. So we're now subsonic, slowing down as the drag comes off aerodynamically. Coming down to 600 miles an hour now, looking for a parachute, and the G will come back up to 3G suddenly as the parachute comes out. Now back to you, losing 60 miles an hour a second, and now gradually as the G comes off, I'm now looking ahead, do I need another parachute? How far to the end of the track? Looking to stop at exactly 10 miles, 100 seconds later, and that's, that will have got us 1,000 miles 
um, in 45 seconds, 10 miles in 100 seconds, and half of a new land speed record. And I've just got to go back and do it again within one hour. How are you feeling so far? I feel okay, but I didn't have to concentrate or drive a car or fly a plane. I don't. I can see why you're up here training so often. What's more thrilling for you, the, the land speed record, the fast jets, or aerobatics in, in the extra? Well, I'm lucky enough to be able to do all three, and they're all challenging and exciting in different ways. The easy way to sum that up is something like fast jet flying is the best day job in the whole world. Driving a land speed record car is the best holiday job in the whole world. And I've been lucky enough to be able to do both. I bet. Andy, that was brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today. That was fantastic. Brilliant. I'm so glad you enjoyed it.